I just wanted to say when we sing songs at church, you're not just singing along with the radio. It's your heart and mind and spirit saying these words to the Lord. So it's hard to sing the show me how to love like you love. Break my heart for what breaks yours. To ask God to break our hearts for what breaks his heart and to understand that his heart is broken about things on this earth and that we're asking to have that same passion and love and and heartbreak for what he has is uh, is a powerful thing to to say so god give us strength when he does that for us i also wanted to say eric and ray and dave and grant and all the other people that helped move stuff to storage. You guys did a wonderful job moving the sanctuary to the front. <laughs> Eric did a lot of magic work above the ceiling. You don't even know that part to pull everything back over to this area and Grant picked paint and uh, we hauled stuff out and it looks, it looks great. Thank you guys. So I'm reading. 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. <clears throat> the end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Ooh. Each one should use whatever gifts he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, Sunday school teachers and kids are dismissed. Here's your question. If you could be good at, at one thing, tell somebody next to you, if you could be good at one thing, what would it be? For me, I think about this actually surprisingly often. Uh, we used to, in uh, college, we would ask this question, if you could have one not-so-superpower, what would you want? So you couldn't have the big superpowers like the Superman has or, or uh, Iron Man or anything like that, but you could have a little superpower. I forget what we call them, like mini powers or something like that. And, um, one person I remember said that if he could have one mini power, it'd be to be able to fall asleep at will, whenever he wanted to, just 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 fall asleep, lights out. That was that was one, and actually I kind of liked that one. Uh, one person was that they could like any food. That they were that they had in front of them, and I thought that actually would be one I would take over the first one. Uh, that would increase my food possibilities by almost infinite. Um, so the uh, the conversation ended one of these times when one person said, I, I, 
If I could have one meaning power, it would be to know the day that I'm going to die. And yeah, so then we, we just crashed the conversation because then we all were talking, would you, would you really want to know that? Uh, what, it, and it has interesting ramifications. So don't think about it today. It has nothing to do with the sermon. But think about it someday. If you actually could know the day you were going to die, would you want to know? Uh, and what would that actually do to your life? But again, that's, that's a free piece. That's nothing to do with this. But if I could do, be good at one thing, um, I thought, would I want to be good at golf? Because I'm not. I golf. People ask this, say, are you a golfer? And it, it, see, that's a hard question to answer because what they mean is, are you, would I enjoy golfing with you? And the answer to that is probably not. But I do golf. Uh, it, it, just not very well. But I wouldn't waste that on that. Tennis has always been a sport that I think looks like fun. Uh, you know, get out and run around, hit the ball, and, and, and all that. But I, I probably wouldn't choose that, even though it would be good exercise. Chess, uh, I really like chess, and I'm reasonably good at it, but if, it would, if I could choose to be really good at one thing, uh, it wouldn't be chess. If I could choose to be good at one thing, it would be singing. And, and I put these pictures up there because these are actually singers that I enjoy watching them perform because of how much they enjoy singing. Uh, when I see them sing, they, it, right, it's unbelievable watching them. And you can see their pictures, the Ray Charles picture in the top middle there, um, that guy knew how to have fun. <laughs> he loved to sing Bruce Springsteen, whether you like him or not, doesn't matter, the guy when he's performing, just loves to sing. And, and, and Elvis, I wasn't alive for most of his career, but, uh, but another guy where you could just tell it was coming from his soul when he was singing. Now, I wouldn't want to be a performer like this. Um, what I would, if, if I could be good at one thing and it was singing, I'd really like the idea of, of leading worship, like, like Eric does and like uh, other folks that we've had just or Chris Tomlin, I mean, I watched that guy, and I've mentioned this before, just, man, if I could do that, I'd, I'd ditch every other gift I had. Now, it's not really a fair trade, because my gifts had, you know, but, but, but if I could ditch all my gifts to be like, to do that, because I just think it would be so fulfilling, so uh, amazing to lead people in the, their worship of the Lord. But, sadly, uh, I can't. Uh, if, if I were leading... Um, it would not be worship that you would be participating in. Uh, it would be something else. I don't know. But uh, we'll never test it out until we get to heaven, and then you guys can all stop by, and I'll, I'll lead you in a song. But uh, the title of this sermon is I Wish I Could Sing and Other Gifts I Don't Have. So it's going to be a long sermon because I'm covering every gift I don't have. Uh, no, that's not true. Um, I want to read you this poem. And it's not and when you're done with this poem, you're going to be like, whoa, this would be fun. But uh, it says this, it says, if I could be good at something, I'd surely step in the ring. If I could juggle or dance or pitch, maybe act or sing. If I could be good at something, I'd certainly step on the stage. But as it is, there's nothing I've got. My book is an empty page. Now, I'm not reading that because I want to cheer you up. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel this way. I think there's a lot of people when they... Uh, particularly come into church, that they see Eric and the worship team, or they see Jerry preaching, or they see the guys coming up and doing family business, or they see the guys who go out and share the gospel, or whatever it is, and I think most people feel like this. When it comes to real things that matter, I've got nothing. When it comes to serving in the kingdom, I, I was given the job of holding the door, when they were handing out the gifts to people and, and they ran out by one. And somehow that you don't have a contributing piece to the kingdom, to the church, to the body of Christ. Well, I'm going to challenge that idea. And the reason I'm going to challenge it in the context of our church is I believe that where the Lord's leading us has to do with us understanding our gifts. And... You can't put your gifts into practice until you understand them. And we're supposed to put them into practice. So we're going to take a look at a couple of different scriptures. The first one is this, 1 Peter 4, 7 to 11. I'm going to read through it, and then we'll go back through a couple pieces. It says, the end of all things is near. Now, that's not what we're talking about. Um, so if you're wondering why it says that, or if that's not the point right now. 
uh, but it's the lead in. It's in the midst of what Peter's talking about in the grander picture, but he's giving urgency. So as the end of all things is near, therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. I love that text. We're only going to cover a little piece of it. There's a lot of stuff in there, and, and someday we might come back to it. But the piece I mainly want to cover is this. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Now, remember, see, I'm, going to, I'm going to eliminate some text so it's not crowded here. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Now, and, and I can read that, and, and, and you can hear that, and you'll probably go, well, yeah, he's encouraging those people who have gifts. But, but it's more than that. Whatever gift you have received. The implication is the gift you have. There's not an address here that's to them. It's to you. You have a gift. If you, if you don't see it, We'll get back to it. But you have a gift. And you not only have a gift, you have a gift from God. Right where you're at, right now, if you've never thought of it before, if you don't really have an idea of, of what it is, if you've always thought it's somebody else who can do these things and those things, you're probably right that it's somebody else can do these things and those things. You can do something else. We have narrowed our field of giftings too small. So we think that it's only the worship leaders and the preachers that have gifts. The evangelists are the ones that have gifts. The, the Jerry's, the apostle types that go out that have gifts. But this says, each of you. So look around for just a second at each person. Just, just take notes. Stop looking at me, creeping me out. Look around for a second. What he's saying is, every one of us in here, whether you're rich or poor, educated, you don't have education, whatever your social status, whatever your anything, you have. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received. So now stop looking around, bugging those people, and think for a second, do you believe that for you? Do you believe that you have something that's been given to you by God to use in the body, in the kingdom? And do you know what it is? And it may not be just one thing. It's not going to be a lot of different things. There, there are a few people who have these really wide-spanning gifts. But for us right now, let's just imagine that we're, we're, we're not those people. But, but where you're at, you imagine God, when he was making, you said, Here, this is your gift. This is what you're going to be able to contribute to my kingdom when you grow up. Here it is. You have it. Even if you've never opened it, you have it. Even if you've never thought about it, you have it. Now we're going to skip forward to, to a different verse for a minute. This is in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. It says this, Just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So this first part, he's making a comparison of the church body to your body, your physical body. And he's saying, Jesus, for each one of us, we have just one of us, one body, all right? I'm here, I've got one body. There's not another me that's going to come in. There's not six of me, there's one. And my body has many members. So to understand, that doesn't mean there's like different members. Like it's not like the YMCA that different, they check in and check out, although I might seem like I have multiple personalities. The, it's the members part, one body has many members. Are these kind of members? My hand. 
It's part of my body. It's my hand. And if you look at the hand, the hand's actually made up of a lot of members. Without a thumb, a hand's not very useful. Without the pinky, it's less useful. If all you had was the thumb and the pinky, try writing that way sometime. It doesn't work very well. You need all the hands, and then you need the palm, and you need the wrist. If you just had a rigid wrist, this hand would be a little bit limited, right? So you need the palm and the thumb and the fingers and the wrist and actually the elbow just for the hand to work. Many members, many component parts to make this hand work. And then for the body, we're back to us with the foot. And I'm not going to go through every body part, but the, the foot needs a lot of pieces too. And I never knew this, but I was told that I was reading a book about a mountain climber who got frostbite and he lost his big toes. And he had to relearn how to walk because with your big toe is actually the one that causes you, it gives your brain the sense of how you balance. So you take those big toes away, boom, and he had to relearn how to walk just because of the missing big toe. Now, none of us, if we were signing up for what body part could I be, would say, hey, I don't really want to be that big toe. But we need the big toe. And the ear. Just the ear on the head and the role that it plays. And now, have you ever look at ears? They're kind of creepy. And some people's are more creepy than others. But... It's not the ear that does anything. Imagine, just for a second, an ear all by itself. Doesn't do much except look creepy. Hey, how you doing? Well, I'm an ear. How does that fit in? Oh, I don't know. I just, I just ear myself, you know, just hanging out. Earing. It doesn't work. The ear's got to have the rest of the body. And we, we need the other parts, right? We need the eye and the mouth. I don't remember if I put any more on. Oh, yeah. The nose. All of those are part of my body that make me function. That's what this verse in Romans is talking about, that just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, he's now going to compare that to the church body, us. So we'll get onto that. So in Christ, so means likewise, in Christ, just like the human body, though many, us, form one body, the church, each member belongs to all the others. Look at this. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. By the grace of God, you have a gift. My son's birthday is tomorrow, but we celebrated it yesterday. We bought him some gifts. He opened them up. It was a good birthday. But one of his gifts didn't come. Amazon fell through. Mark here? Yeah. We need to chat. I got an email yesterday that because I was I was waiting for the package to show up. You know how you know a package it's glorious these days. You get an email that says your package will arrive by six PM or four PM or whatever on the given day. And so I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. It didn't show up. So I go online and I open my email and there it is. Your get your your package has been delayed till Monday. I used the name of Amazon in vain. <laughs> We're missing a gift. Now Zach may not have noticed. He's gracious, kind. We have sort of a standard for what, what people get, and we spend kind of this amount of money on birthdays, and it was clearly less because that one gift wasn't there. It was somewhere out there. That's what happens with the church. That gift doesn't know that he's part of my son's happiness. Or mine. I felt like a cheapskate. I had to tell him, Zach, you got another gift coming. That one wasn't there. Because it didn't even know. We have different gifts according to the grace of God. You, by God's grace, He has given you a gift. Now, this is an interesting little piece here. Each member belongs to all the others. Think about that for a second. It too is just a little bit creepy if you think about it. You don't belong to you. You belong to us. Right? 
You belong to Jesus Christ, but because you belong to Jesus Christ and you're part of his kingdom, then you've been assigned to go to a specific church. This one. He may call you sometime to go to some other church. That's totally fine. I'd be disappointed, but if you're called to be a part of this body. And because of that, you don't belong to you. You belong to us. What does that mean? That means not some sort of weird ownership where you're going to get a call from a pastor or an elder and say, hey, you, you, you have to do this. What it means is that you are integral to the function of this body. In the same way that that one gift that didn't show up for my son's birthday made it less of an event. When you don't show up to what we're doing in the kingdom, it makes it less. If you don't know what your gift is, so you don't operate in it, it makes us less. So you belong to us, but you're not functioning with us. I can't feel parts of my ends of my fingers because of some weird nerve thing that's going on in my neck. And I uh, talk to Al. But the, uh, uh, so sometimes when I pick things up, I drop them again. I, I, I teach at high school, and, and I have a whiteboard, and I erase the whiteboard. And about once a day, maybe once every other day, the eraser just goes because the ends of my fingers aren't working how they're supposed to work. They're not belonging to me the way they're supposed to. Same thing as this. I want you to understand that you have a gift for your sake and ours. We can't do in the kingdom what we're supposed to do if our fingertips aren't working right. If you're still out in the mail someplace and, and you're going to get here, but we don't know when. So uh, just so it's clear, <laughs> in, in a, each of us in Christ have different gifts. That's you too. And here's a list of them. I'm not going to leave them up here for long. Because I don't want you to go, ooh, I wonder which one's mine. If you already know, great. If you don't, you won't find it out by looking at this. But there's a bunch. And this isn't even all of them, depending on how you break them out. But there they are. You just need to know you have a gift. Now, so I, I don't want to be repetitive, but I want you to understand. <laughs> what are you saying? What's that? What are you saying? Nothing. I'm done. If you're on your way home and, and somebody in the car says, so what's the sermon about it? And you don't say, I have a gift. But the gift you need is hearing. <laughs> I believe for our church to have the impact that we're supposed to have amongst ourselves and out there and o overseas, every single one of us is going to have to identify what our gifts are. Yeah. Every one of us. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. Not right now, but... We're going to talk about this next year. I'm going to give a quick pitch for the, the business meeting that we're going to have next week. It's, I don't like the word business meeting, but we don't have, it's in the Constitution. We have to have a business meeting every year. So for the first time in 13 years, we're going to have one. But the, uh, the, it's not really a business meeting. It's a vision meeting, and it's a who are we meeting, and what are we doing, and how are we going to get there. So please be here because you're part of the body. And if you don't have the vision you're not going to be able to travel with us. If you can't be here, then get together with me and say, hey, what's going on? Because I want to know. I want you to see this. Small text, I understand. Listen, if you can't see it. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. So he had five, and he had gotten five more through his usage of the five that he was given. And he said, Master, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I've gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. So this guy has five bags. He's got five. And you, this is also replicated in the parable of the talents. Whether it's bags of gold or individual talents, it doesn't matter. The, the image is you've been given this investment that you're supposed to use. And this guy has. He's gotten the five, and he's used those five, and he got five more. He got a doubling of his investment. And the next one says, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. So the math's the same. He had two bags. He didn't start with as much, but he had two, and he got two more. And what did the master say? Exactly the same thing. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. 
I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. Here's what I want you to see. The master's happiness is attached to the use of the gift. I see so many unhappy Christians. So many people, and, and, and that's not just talking here, although some times us here too, but out there, people who love Jesus, but they're not using their life to serve him because they don't even know how to, because they don't even know what they've been given to do to serve. That's on the church some. So the church is at fault some of not helping people learn and not providing opportunities. It's on uh, the church to make sure that we're taking care of our people, but we're going to do everything we can here to take care of our people because what we want is to come and share our master's happiness. Isn't that what you want? Don't you want to share in the happiness of God? Well, to do that, you've got to get back to this. You, know, it. you have to use it. And you have to use it in the context of the body. I was talking to a guy that's probably three weeks ago who doesn't go to church, but he's a Christian. And I said, hey, understand, help me understand. You want you to go to church? Why not? I don't need church to serve God. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. You need to be part of a body. And if you don't think so, cut your ear off and set it on a table and watch it. How's that working? Can you hear me? <laughs> Nothing. You know why? Because the near the ear needs the inside of the ear. And then it needs the skull to hold it in place and the neck to turn it so it can pick up what it's trying to do. And it needs the brain to interpret it. It needs all those pieces. And if you don't want to cut your ear off, do your hand instead. Leave it there. And then set a pen by it. And then give it some instructions. When I come back, please have written a note. And it won't. Because the gift isn't being used because it's not attached to the body. I'm not making this up. It's what the scripture says. You have to function in terms of the body. And you've been assigned to this body. If that's not working for you, then you ask the Lord, Lord, I'm not finding any venue uh, to, to apply my gifts. What do I do? Maybe the Lord tells you that you need to uh, help develop a place to do that. He might tell you, you need to go find a place that does. We had a gal leave a couple years ago, uh, and I talked, how, how come you're not going anymore? There was just no place for me to serve. That's on me. That's on us. Didn't provide that. It's okay that they're in another church, because they did. They went to another church, and they're serving, and that's great. That's the larger kingdom, but this is our body here. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. What I want for us as a body is to be able to know our own gifts and know each other. Somebody calls me up and says, hey, this, uh, uh, this is a need, and I got nothing. It's not in my gift set. Somebody calls up and says, uh, is there somebody that could lead some songs for us? Nope. If you're just talking to me. Now, if somebody says, hey, no, I don't understand this scripture, I probably can help. We need somebody to give a, a, a sermon or a message, I probably can help. Because my gifts lie in the area of teaching and shepherding. They don't rely in other places. I'm not good at hospitality. It doesn't mean I'm not a nice guy and you can't come over and hang with me, but I'm not naturally bent towards having big social parties and connecting people up in, in those sorts of sen uh, ways, but there are people here that are amazing at that. I'm not a good administrator. If somebody says, hey, yeah, you know, how do we organize this or how do we organize that in the context of sort of business structures and all that sort of stuff, I got nothing. Administration's a gift that I don't have. One of you does. We spent hours that last, well, we is a bad word, I guess that's not me. It was a couple of our finance guys spent hours in the last week and a half trying to organize and get, and get our finances so that we can explain them to you next week. And we won't spend a lot of time, don't let that drive you off, but we'll spend a little time. But that, I, that's not my gift. I'm not good at that. You might be. But if you're not here, if those two guys hadn't said this is my gift and I'm going to do it we'd be 
dead in the water. Dead in the water. If Eric was said, yeah, you know, I know I'm, I'm, one of my gifts is leading people in worship, and, but he's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to just do that on my own at home. <laughs> we come to a stop. And we're, we're stopped in a lot of places. We're not, we don't have progress in a lot of places because you either don't know your gift, or you haven't figured out how to connect it, or we haven't figured out how to connect you to it. And I'm not, that's not a blame thing. That's, this is our next step as a church. Getting people connected to their gifts and their ministries. So this sermon's going to end in a weird way. I'm done. <laughs> you have a gift. We've got to figure out how to use it. Amen? Amen. Grant tapped me on the shoulder and, and asked, would it, would it break, break the flow up to explain kind of what we're doing, organizational cyst chairs and stuff? Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to leave this stuff set up here, the communion tables over there if you want to take communion, but, and then we're going to pick up these chairs on this side and stack them in the back, and that's what we're going to do regularly. Um, when we're feeding people, we'll have to take a few more chairs down. But, but what, what Grant did there, and why it doesn't break the flow for me at all, is that's one of Grant's gifts, is, uh, is, is leadership and, and, and taking looking at what's coming and, and how do we get it done right. Um, and that's why, not the only reason, it's one of the reasons he's on the elder board is the specific gifts that he has. And you have gifts. And I get asked sometimes, well, how do the elders end up being elders? And the answer to that is God, through the hearts of the leadership, uh, appoints them because of the specific giftings they have. Some people's giftings just don't lend themselves to elder leadership, and that's okay. Right? And the goal isn't to have a title. It's to know your gifts and to use them. So a week ago, I talked about that Jesus, when he's going by blind Bartimaeus, and he says to him, what do you want me to do for you? And I asked you to ask the Lord something. What do you want him to do for you? And I hope you've done that, but if you haven't, you still can. Lord, I would like you to do this for me. But the second thing, this week, what I want you to do is say, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? And it will always be within your gifts. Always. So it's okay to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I really need you to do this for me. And most always he will in his time. But the other side of it is saying, Lord, what do you want my life to do in manifestation of your gifts that you put in me? So those would be the two questions that we're starting this year off. What do we want to ask the Lord? What is he telling you? To do and how to if you don't know your gifts we'll get there you know you've got one i can print that slide out for you if you need it if you have a gift betty did you have something you to say? no I didn't okay okay i'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, okay lord pray that you take us home safe and that this next week would be a blessing to us and to you and I ask lord that you would reveal our gifts and if we've sort of known but we don't know completely then just begin to expand our vision and our understanding and ask that you lead us as a body to a place where we're all contributing to the kingdom. And you can say to each one of us, well done, good and faithful Thank servant. You. Go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.